Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III, affectionately known as AC3. A quick reference, a quick, a quick, a quick ref, a kick, a, a quick wristwatch check, check, Explorer 2, check, Amiga Speedmaster, man on the fucking moon. And uh, today I'd just like to talk about the tier system, the tier system, my good friend. Simon Crane put together a fantastic video to explain the tier system. And I gotta tell you what, Simon's really learning. He's uh, He knows that Brumont stuff is bullshit. He sold it all off. He's becoming a serious Rolex person and uh, he's looking at an Explorer 2 next. So uh, we'll get him into the moon watch before the year's out. So uh, with special permission, Simon's given me special permission to put the tier system up on my channel. So uh, without further ado, let's go and have a look at Simon's video on the tier system. And uh, you fuckers can tell me what you think. Archie Luxury, signing out. Okay, um, right, I'm gonna try in a very, very general and sort of a uh, little bit tongue in cheek way to sort of clear up the tier system here regarding the old watches. Now, <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of my uh, fellow YouTubers seem to think that price dictates uh, the um, the tier system. So we have across the bottom here, cost, okay? Uh, that's it, you can see that. And from zero to 10 up here, we have horological worth. You can also include in that side branding too. Right, so the first sort of section is your, um, kind of like your filler watches. And that sort of sits down here, about a two for, uh, horological worth up to about a four in pricing and um, you could be up to sort of two and a half three grand for this sort of watches that includes uh like I said tag would sit sort of here um you know squale uh steinhardt all that sort of things in there now these watches actually if i can be totally fair with them right they do serve a little bit of a purpose what they do is they, they help feed the addiction of uh, watch buying you will buy these sort of watches. I mean, I'd say it's okay to have one or two of these watches at any time. Um, and what we do is we buy them just to have that sort of uh, thrill of having something come through the post and open it up and you've got a nice sparkly new watch. But we never generally hang on to these watches, okay? Um, yeah, so I'm being kind there and sort of giving the likes of Steinhardt and whatnot a bit of a, a bit of a, um, you know, giving them a little bit of worth. Now, we have up here, savvy purchases. Right now, this can be anywhere from a 10, horological wise, up to a five. This is quite a big group in here. Now, this is the sort of thing that if you're a, an enthusiast or a collector, you should sort of get into this sort of thing. You would have, you know, price, you'd have a Seiko, an SKX there. The old Seiko SKX. You could say that you're, I don't know, let's say your Rolex, Mega, you know, all in that sort of section. This is your savvy purchase, right? And this is where your collectors, enthusiasts should. If you're if you're in this sort of section down here, you should try and you should aspire to be further up here. I'm afraid, right? Um, as we go further up the charts, we have this part here. This is the likes of the Patek Philippe. This is your um. Basically, this is your rich guy that takes advice from watch enthusiasts on what to purchase, right? Up there, quite simply, your particular is, uh, if you kept going up this way, you'd end up at Philip DeFore and Roger Smith and all these sort of things. Now, as you can imagine, that leaves a big space here, right? And this space is, if I fight all the way up here as well, uh, Hublot and such like. This is the uh, footballer section, right? This is the expensive watch with pretty much little horological worth and uh, costs an absolute fucking arm and a leg, right? And will be avoided by pretty much most of us, down to the fact that we'll never be able to afford the pieces anyway. And if we did have that sort of money, right? And if you had it switched on, you'd be buying this sort of stuff up here. Um, that's a little diagram, a little, just a quick rough sketch. Now, uh, I didn't come up with this idea. Uh, one of my 
YouTubing friends and a member of the One Day Watch Enthusiast group, M3AU, come up with this diagram and I pretty much copied it. Um, so go and check his channel out, very, very clever guy, a, a decent watch collector. There's a man who has a handful of jousties, a handful of Rolexes and really knows his stuff. Um, and that's it, I'm just, you know, just sort of thinking about that. That, that sort of, that's good, that kind of covers it. I mean, you know, cost's important, of course it is. Um, but, biological worth, branding, definitely important too. As I say, it's all right to have the sort of filler watches, the watches that feed your addiction. But ultimately, for most of us, we should look to be sort of trying to get into this area here somewhere. Um, you know what? It's just made me think of something. It's made me think of something. And it is... Let's have a little go here. Let's have a little go. There's another tier system we should worry about as well, and that is the watch collector tier system. Now, it's just popped into my head this, so I'm gonna sort of, uh, I'm gonna sort of do this ad lib. And I think it goes something like this. You basically have a triangle, the fucking pen ever works. Okay, the watch collectors. You have people down here, you have the, the biggest group of people down here who are your, you know, in, in your Seikos, Invictors, um, that sort of stuff. They're getting into it. They're buying loads and loads and loads and loads of shit, right? Your next level up. This is your, you know, your tag, long jeans, etc. Right? So people have progressed. They've gone and got a couple of hundred quid watches, and they realise they want something a bit more. They go and buy the tag F1, and then, you know, hopefully they sort of see the error of their ways. We're buying that, and they step up to the plate and get up to here which will get you into sort of Omega Seamaster territory, even pre-owned Seamaster, Omega, um, pre-owned Datejust, let's say. You know, we're now getting up there, we're now sort of getting the serious stuff. You see how, as we come up the houses from the cheap shit, right, it comes into a nice triangle. Now, your next step is, you know, your sports Rolex. Ah, uh, sports. This is when you get into this position, right, for a lot of guys anyway, when you get up there, right, I don't actually mean to put Omega beneath the uh, Rolex in, but a Rol an Omega Seamaster for sort of £1,300 or something is, is pretty much damn as good a watch as you're going to get for that price. And I would suggest to anybody that's thinking of uh, perhaps buying a, a, you know, a legend diver from a long jeans or one of the Oris uh, divers or something to definitely consider buying a pre-owned Seamaster at that level. Um, yeah, so your, your sports Rolexes would be over that. That'll be, you're now into the position like Archie Luxury, like a lot of guy in the watch groups where you're, you, you can buy and sell. We can make a few quid here and there. Okay, let's take that with a pinch of salt. And, um, and uh, I've just noticed my face has got that red fucking thing going on again. What it is is that the camera's actually sat on my daughter's pink chair to sort of raise it up a bit. Um, and have a light shining down on it. Lightning can never get that right. So yeah, so your Rolex Sports, you're then that sort of, you're then there, you're then into that sort of position where you sort of, you have basically a watch fund and you'll trade a watch to buy another watch and, and so on and so forth. This is, this is where you wanna be, right? This is, this is nursery, this is kindergarten, right? This is, primary school, this is high school, you're now getting into the university of watch collection, right, or watch collecting, right, this is where a lot of the guys in the modern day watch enthusiasts are, this is where a lot of people have joined that group and thought, ah, oh, fuck this, this isn't for me, because these guys do, a lot of them can sort of frown upon people who are quite happy to sort of, you know, have the sort of, the 20 invictors and never want to sort of move up. You must always, I think, strive to sort of, you, you know, move on a little bit. You know, up top, of course, you're going to have your sort of your Pateks and your APs and, you know, your sort of super duper collectors. Now, that actually gets split in half, right? Because what you can have on one side is your people who are into watches of such sort of significant horological worth. Um, you know, the sort of people that will, will look more kindly at sort of a £700 Grand Seiko 
than what they would a you know, 20,000 pound diamond encrusted Rolex. And then of course you get the guys on the other side of that pinnacle who will have the 20,000 pound diamond encrusted Rolex. But hey, you know, there's no encounter for taste, is there? So that's it, so there's my watch collector's tier system. Very rough, very, uh, you know, it's not perfect. And I know that loads of you are gonna come and say, ah, but that should be this and this should be that and so on and so forth. That's absolutely fine. Take this with a pinch of salt. Take this, this isn't law. You, you can apply this in your own sort of terms if you like. And believe you me, some people are quite comfortable um, being down here. You know, if you're quite comfortable with that, that's absolutely fine. But I'll tell you this now, if you're comfortable owning 20 Invictors, right? Don't you fucking dare call them snobs because they want to push on. All right, that annoys me. Okay, right guys, I shall see you later. Okay. Yeah.